Hey, what's going on, everybody? Chris Wask here from Net Report, and today I decided to throw a little curveball and make a video instead of writing an article. Uh, it's actually more work, but um, you know, only the best for our subscribers here on the site and you know, Ruckus fans all around that will that will see this and read this, whatever. Um, you know, the Ruckers, as you know, uh, the Ruckers football team um, begins training camp uh, for the upcoming 2018 season on August 2nd. And, uh, you know, this is a big year for third year head coach Chris Ash. However, Ash isn't what I'm going to talk about today. Today is all about the number of position battles for the Scarlet Knights. Some spots are pretty much set in stone, while others aren't. And we're going to take a quick dive and discuss starting jobs that are still up for grabs. But before we get started, follow me on Twitter if you haven't already, at Chris Waskey. That's at sign C-H-R-A-S. W A S K Y, and please leave some feedback either either there or on the message board for the um yeah on the site. It will be greatly appreciated no matter what. If it's negative or positive, it helps everyone out. And with that being said, let's get started and uh, let's take a look at the offense. Starting on offense, Rutgers has yet another quarterback battle on its hands, and three main competitors are freshman Archer Sikowski, senior Gio Rosinio and sophomore Jonathan Lewis. Over the past two seasons, Rossino has gone from a down-the-depth chart backup to an October starter who basically finishes out the rest of the season. Um, Rossino has provided a spark. Um, he's played well at times, got to earn some wins for Rutgers, which is which is a big deal. Um, he's played in 16 career games with 12 starts. I think he had 7 last year and 5 the year before. Um, uh, he won't put up, you know, gaudy stats, but um, he's a he's a good game manager and he's tough as nails. He's insanely tough. Lewis appeared in seven games off the bench as a freshman in 2017, as the dub quarterback of the future got some valuable experience. He didn't have the luxury of, you know, um, coming in in January, kind of learning the offense. Then he came in over the summer, basically training camp, and um, you know, started started fresh from there. Um, he threw for two touchdowns, ran for four more, and um, he's got a huge frame. He's kind of built like a truck. Um, he has a big arm, but he needs to work on his accuracy and, and his playbook. Sikowski had the lux luxury of rolling early this past January, coming over from IMG um, in Florida and also Old Bridge um, before that. Um, even though he's just entering his first collegiate season, um, he's already emerged as a leader with the rest of the team, the offense, Receivers, um, he's he's done extra work by himself, um, throwing with the guys, kind of work on chemistry and whatnot, which is which is a huge deal. Um, you know, um, he's six foot five, two hundred fifteen pounds, so he also he already has excellent size and uh, kind of looks like a Big Ten level quarterback. Um, he's projected to do really well and possibly go to the NFL one day. Um, he has a great arm and has really good accuracy and touch. Um, he's always done well in practice, but the question for him is has always been can he perform in games? You know, um, he didn't really perform that well at Old Bridge, and um, he was um, um, somebody else kind of took over the job at, while he was at IMG. Although, um, you know, that, that, that team was loaded down there, so I don't really look, I don't really put too much stock into that one, but, and, um, what have you, um, in the spring game, um, Rosino actually started the spring game, but Sikowski got a lot of reps with the ones and um, threw for 280 yards, uh, three touchdowns, but also two interceptions. So, you know, he's a freshman, he's going to make some plays and he's going to make some mistakes. It's, you, have, you have to live with that if he starts. Um, and, and as of now, Sikowski is the front runner to start unless something dramatically changes. He's going to uh, be the signal caller on the field for Rutgers on September 1st against Texas State. At home at highpoint.com stadium. Um, as for the backup this spring, um, uh, honestly, it looks like Rashino will be the backup. Um, you know, he again he started the spring game. Well, he started the spring game all right with the with the first team. Uh, he shared first team duties with Sikowski. Lewis was with the second team uh, for most of the day. But again, it's hard to look into that because. Uh, who knows? Maybe head coach Chris Ash, you know, gave him gave Rashino a starting job because he has the most experience or whatnot. Um, so we'll see. We'll see how the training camp shakes out. Um, Rashino um, is 
like a more safe choice to be the backup, but Lewis uh, brings the add dimension, has more upside. Uh, no matter what, you know, honestly, all three players are learning yet another offense, and um, John McNulty uh, has brought like an NFL style pro style offense. And um, Ash said, you know, nobody's mastered it yet since at the end of spring. And um, he hopes to make a decision a few weeks into camp. And as of right now, it points to Sikowski being that guy. Next up is the running back room, where a three-headed monster lives. Grad transfer John Hillman, sophomore Raheem Blackshear, and freshman Isaiah Pacheco all bring different elements to the table, and all three figured to share carries this season. Hillman brings a wealth of experience, having already played high-level Division I football in the ACC at Boston College, where he racks up yards and uh, played a lot of games, obviously. Hillman um, is from Plainfield, returned home for his final play of the season, and can pound the rock between the tackles. As an older guy, again, he brings experience and knowledge to the team that he can share. Um, interesting note, I'm sure you guys already know this, but um, Hilleman was committed to the Scarlet Knights coming out of high school, but eventually flipped to Boston College. Now he's back, and um, he's honestly as comfortable. Um, about when we were talking to him during the spring, the way he was standing, the way he was talking, he was so comfortable, and um, he was really happy to be back. Um, really happy to, to be at Rutgers now. Uh, moving on to Blackshear. Um, he's about 5'9", um, less than 200 pounds. Um, he's small, but he's extremely small, I mean, excuse me, extremely speedy and quick at the same time. And he's easily one of the team's top and most dynamic players. He's a threat to score every, t every time he touches the ball. He's a true home, home run threat. Um... You know he can he can really um, take he can really carry carry the ball as well as a running back at the backfield catch the ball at the backfield as a receiver or even line up in the slot and catch, catch passes that way. Um, honestly, you just try to kind of get him out in space. Maybe Rutgers finally does some end around or something like that. And uh, you know we'll we'll see what happens. Uh, Pacheco is jacked. Um, he's a true freshman, but he kind of he honestly looks like he's been. And uh, college strength and conditioning program, Kenny Parker's strength program for for years now. Um, believe it or not, he played quarterback in high school at Violin, so he's just getting back to used to being a running back. And uh, you know, once he get, gets coached up again and learns everything, like learns everything and finds his vision again, um, I think he'll be a true threat. Um, he's very he showed a lot of explosion during the spring, and. Um, you know, I think, again, I think all three will play, and maybe even redshirt sophomore tracing as well. Um, I think uh, Hillman will get the most carries and uh, most likely lead the team in rushing this season, yardage-wise as well. But all, all three will play, and uh, it's a big position battle. It doesn't really matter who starts. Maybe it depends on the opposition, strengths, or weaknesses. But um, all three will play, and it's a true three-headed monster. Or just pretend, it'll just... Depend on the offensive line, which we're going to talk about next. And speak, speaking of offensive line, really quick, um, you know the left and right tackle spots um, are, are pretty much set uh, with Tariq Cole and Kamal Seymour, um, respectively, at the two positions. Um, now the three interior spots are where things get tricky: um, at left guard, center, and right guard. Um, Jonah Jackson. Redshirt Jr., a big, big, nasty mauler. Um, he's kind of, I don't know if wild card is the right word, but um, it's been, it's believed he's going to start at either center or left guard. Um, it's not exactly sure right now what's going to happen. Um, he started the year off last year at center, got hurt, <clears throat> and, um, you know, Michael Maddy came in and did a, did a solid job at center as a, as a freshman. Um, so, it depends. Um, I think I think as of right now, Jackson will be playing left guard and pushing Mike Lonsdorf, who started the spring game at left guard, back to second team. Maybe even Zach Vineski as well. And uh, Maddie will play center. I think I think Jackson uh, maybe maybe won't be listed on the depth chart, but I think Jackson will be the backup center. Who knows if Maddie struggles? Maybe Jackson goes to center and Lonsdorf or Vineski. Uh, we'll go left guard. Um, right guard right now, 
it seems like redshirt sophomore Nick Kerman really has a stranglehold on this on the and really has really has won the job. Um, he played well this spring. He's huge, 6'5", 380 pounds. Um, um, you know, he's really he really played well this spring. Really kind of really really jumped ahead of everybody. You know, it was really um, it was really it was two competition coming into spring, but he kind of ran away with it a little bit. Kind of beat out Zach Fineski. and um, you know Zach Fineski is Richard Jr. Uh, you know, he's kind of, kind of coming into his last couple years. Maybe, maybe he'll show something. Maybe he'll be better in the spring. But right now, um, it seems like left to right, it'll be Tariq Cole, Jonah Jackson, Michael Maddy, Nick Kerman, and Kamal Seymour. And again, Kamal Seymour, um, he struggled to pass protection, um, since coming over from defense starting the last year and a half, I guess now. Um, if he struggles, um, I think Zach Heeman will go in. Um, at right tackle, Richard Senior. Um, if not, uh, maybe Sam Vetman, Richard, uh, excuse me, uh, true sophomore, or true freshman Rick Carl O'Neill, who really flashed the spring and uh, seems like he has really good potential. But again, I thought he was a great steal uh, in this class, and uh, he enrolled early, which is which was huge as well. And um, so yeah, that's offensive line. Lastly, for the offense, moving on sides for wide receivers, every one of them is young and unproven, but talented. Sophomore Bo, Bo Melton has solidified himself as a starter with an excellent spring. He had he had more he had a couple touchdowns in the spring game and really caught the ball well during practice and um, it was really overall had a really good spring. Um, as a true freshman in 2017, he dealt with uh, I think it was a back injury and um, you know just struggled. You know, being a freshman, just into college and whatnot, uh, but it seems to have, you know, adjusted to the speed of the game, and uh, has really, really come in to himself, and uh, really, he really played well. Um, Shamin Jones, redshirt freshman from Cardinal Hayes, um, is also on the rise, and it uh, looks as though he's going to start on the other side of the field at, at wide receiver. Um, he was kind of shut down in the spring game uh, a little bit by the Rutgers corners. But um, he has the ability to go into the deep ball. He's uh, he's a big target, and uh, he can make plays as well. Um, guys like you know Ever Wormley and Moji Abbey will be in the rotation as well. Um, in the slot, you know there's honestly a legit a legit battle between sophomore Hunter Hayek and freshman Eddie Lewis. Um, Hayek played last season, um, you know catching eight passes, 62 yards. Um, he also spent time as a punt returner as well on special teams. Um, you know, he really filled in for Janarian Grant in all areas and all facets of the game. Um, <clears throat> excuse me, he has the ability to make really tough catches, and um, you know, he's really he's really quick as well. Um, Lewis, um, he went to he was part of the same class as Hayek, you know, the Richard and all the Richard freshman freshman now, uh, Richard freshman and sophomores now, but um, he eventually he went to Milford Academy for a prep semester. And um, he really matured there, and he had he had a really good season, um, with, 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 which was huge. And he stuck to his Rutgers commitment, and he really played well this spring. He flashed. Um, I know in the spring game, um, he dropped uh, he dropped a short touchdown from uh, Sikowski, but um, besides that, you know, he was he was wide open. He you know he got he he, he has the ability to get open. Um, he's quick. He's dynamic. He can make plays. Um, if you remember his final high school game, he scored the game-winning touchdown. You know, I think I believe it was like time. I think time expired when he did it. It was like a hook and out wide a play. He won it for his team. It was crazy. Um, he has the ability to make plays, and um, you know, honestly, either either could start. And you know, both both will play. The both the both rotate. And although although right now I give the edge to Hayek, although it's extremely close. Um, the unit, the wide receivers as a whole, you know, because they're so young, they're, they're, they'll continue to improve and get better as the days and years goes on. And, uh, you know, rounding out the depth is uh, is uh, Tyler Hayek. Hunter Hayek's brother. He's taller. Uh, he has to work on his catching, uh, which which he's gotten better at as well. As well as, uh, as and uh, behind Hayek as well, there's a number of walk-ons, like uh, Prince Taylor, for example. Um, who know who might play? You never know, but uh, although it's unlikely. 
And I don't want you to think I, uh, you know, forgot about the tight end spot, but uh, that's this pretty much set in stone. You know, Jerome Washington, uh, Travis Volkolek, and uh, the kid Griffith Stewart are all going to play. Uh, fullback Max Anthony is, is the fullback. He's the main guy, movie guy. He might play some tight end as well. The lead blocker, maybe get some, uh, probably won't get some carries. Who knows? Uh, I haven't looked at the offense as much yet. And, um, but he'll, he'll line up in the backfield and at tight end as well. All right, everybody. Thanks for listening to this version of uh, the Rutgers position battles, the f football team, the gridiron. Uh, next time, we'll be back with the defense. Uh, today was up with the offense. I decided to uh, split it up. I was going to do them all together, but um, I don't want to make the video too long. And uh, you know, bore you guys to death. So um, again, follow me on Twitter at Chris Waski and um, share this uh, video. Share the Share the article that's going to be on the site and uh, leave comments on the message board. Uh, thanks, guys. Uh, have a good day.